All right, coaches, tonight we are joined by Spencer Erickson of South Dakota State University. Coach, introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah, so uh, I coach Seven Spencer Erickson, um, coach defensive line here at, at SDSU. Um, been here going on my third season now. Um, prior to here, I was a graduate assistant um, on staff, um, graduate assistant for a year at Bemidji State, and then I was also a student coach for five years at UW Oshkosh in Wisconsin, um, where I'm from, um, where I got my undergrad and everything. So been been coaching football ever since I got out of high school. Um, my dad's been a high school head coach now for over five years. So football is really I know my life. Perfect. So coach is going to walk us through tonight um, some defensive line techniques and some defensive line development stuff. So coach, floor is yours. Awesome. Um, so we'll get started here with everything. There, now you should be able to go. Perfect. Awesome. So we'll start right now um, with our run technique, um, just kind of base ways that we play the run here um, and how we uh, play our block reactions up front. I think a lot of the stuff will transition over to any level of football, pretty uh, common uh, single gap stuff. Um, here's the contact info. Um, if you guys want to reach out ever, ever have any questions um, about D-line, defense in general, want to come visit SDSU, here's all my contact info, phone number, Twitter, email. Um, so big part, obviously, of being a top 10 defense um, in all these categories is stopping the run first, first and foremost. Um, as a lot of people know, if you're not able to stop the run, it's going to be a long day for you at the office, um, especially, you know, at any level, high school, you know, low college, Division One, doesn't matter. you got to be able to stop the run to be a successful defense. Um, so right, right away, we'll get into our block reactions and kind of how we play it um, up front. So the first block, um, pretty pretty common from everybody will probably see is a base block, um, just kind of a one-on-one -on -one base block here. So we'll get right into the film um, of how we kind of do that. So we'll look here at our defensive tackle here, Ryan, number 98. Um, so he's going to get a base block by this guard. And we'll kind of talk you through here what we're looking for. So the coaching point for a base block is we want to press out and defend our gap. We're responsible for the gap we are aligned in. So anytime we get a single base block on our man key, being the guard in this situation he's playing, he's going to press him out and defend his gap. And ideally in this situation, he can press him back enough to defend this open A gap as well and really restrict it from the running back being able to run through there. So as we watch here, we get good takeoff, good pad level by Ryan, good hand placement. We see his man hand down the center of his chest. He's able to press him back drive him backwards, and then get off the block and in on the tackle. Again, we're looking for good pad level, looking for good hand placement, good hip explosion, staying low, staying underneath his pads. He does a great job here pressing him out, pressing him back, again, restricting that A gap where the ball is trying to be ran in. Again, we'll look at number 69 here, Crockett. Um, again, a base block here by the guard being his man key. So he's keying him. He gets a singular base block. Again, we want to press out and defend our gap. We really want to restrict him so that way the ball cannot be ran into this gap or the gap that he is aligned in and responsible for. So again, you can see he has great pad level, good hand placement. He's able to press him back. Okay, they're trying to insert the fullback on an ISO play, but because he has a good takeoff, and he's pressing the dude back. This gap is too small for the guy to fit through. So we're able to come and fit it. And then obviously our job up front is a D lineman. We don't want to stay blocked forever. So we really work the block destruction here, which he does a great job of. Once he presses out, owns his man, he's defending his gap. He's defending the other gap by pressing his body into it. He sees the ball is declared. He's now going to get off the block and get in on the play. So great job there by Crockett. Defensive ends will also get this block. So we'll look at here, Reese at defensive end. Again, the coaching point of a base block is to press out and defend my gap. So he's going to try to press back this tackle, keep his head and his body and his gap while restricting the gap inside of him so that way the ball cannot be ran in it. So again, great takeoff by him. Good hand placement, good pad level. You can see his head and his chin is underneath his, so he's got the pad level on him. He's got the leverage point. He presses out. You can see the gap inside of him has virtually disappeared. 
He's got his guy owned, pressed him back. Ball's coming to him. He gets off the block, able to make the tackle in the backfield. Again, we'll look at Ryan here, defensive end. Again, we're going to get the base block by the tackle coming out at him. He gets the block, good hand placement, gets extension, presses him back. The running back wants to cut outside. He's able to get off the block like we just talked about and again make the tackle. So great job by Ryan here. Getting good extension, good pad level, not get moved off the ball. Then again, working off the block, chopping the hands away, and getting in on the tackle. The next one we'll get, and this is primarily going to happen in the defensive ends, is the tight end, getting a base block on them. Again, coaching point being the same, we want to press out and defend our gap on the base block. So as we look here, okay, we got Tolu playing defensive end on this tight end. He's responsible for this C-gap, okay? This tight end is going to try to base block him and scoop him out of this gap. Again, he's going to press, <coughs> defend his gap, and then work off. Again, we get blocked up front a lot as D linemen, obviously, but we got to get off blocks and make plays. So again, he's going to press out, defend his gap. This gap has virtually disappeared. So when he sees the ball declared outside of him, he's able to work off, strip the ball out, and we're able to scoop and score here by one of our corners. A big game-changing play here in a close game. Again, we'll see the same thing from this tight end. He's going to try to base block and get Austin out of this C gap, which he is responsible for. So you're going to see a great job here by Austin pressing out, defending his gap. His body's in his gap. There's nothing there. He's going to defend it. Once the ball declares outside of his gap, he's going to go ahead and work off the block and get in on the tackle. So again, key, po key points for the base block is to press out and defend my gap. Not getting uh, pushed back vertically off the line of scrimmage. Great job there by Austin. Okay, we'll watch Reese again here, number 97 on the left side of the screen. He's going to get another base block by this tight end. Again, the coaching point here, press out, defend my gap. So as he steps, again, good pad level, good hand placement, and hands inside, elbows tight, thumbs up. Boom, press him out, extend, drive him back. He has him owned, defends his gap. Now sheds off the block, snaps him to the ground. He's able to get in and affect the play. Again, base block, press out, defend my gap, shut off the block, go get in on the play. All right, the next one um, that we'll see primarily is a reach block. Now, this is where the offensive lineman is going to try to get to our opposite shoulder, so get us out of the gap that we are in. So as we watch it here, okay, we're going to get a reach block by the tackle. They're running a hard outside zone play here to the offensive right, to the defensive left, okay? The big coaching point here on the reach block is obviously to maintain our gap, and then we want to anchor down. We don't want to run laterally for forever. We want to play somewhat vertical on the other side of the line of scrimmage, okay? Anchor down at about two by two on the other side of the ball and force the ball inside of us. If the uh, running back or the ball carrier insists on bouncing outside, we should maintain our outside half free and be able to get off the block again and make the play in the backfield or make it bubble so far backwards that our pursuit and great effort can run to the ball and we can get it tackled. So you can see here, our defensive end is going to get a hard reach block by the tackle. He's going to punch again, anchor down two by two, make the ball cut inside of him for the rest of the defense to get in on the play. We also get a good reach block here by the guard on our defensive tackle. So as he gets his reach block, again, he's coming off the ball hard. He's got good pad level, good hand placement. He's extended. He's running his feet, pressing him back. Anchors down, ball's declared inside. Again, get off the block and get in on the tackle. So good job there front side, shutting down this outside zone play.
by us getting off the ball and being able to play our block reaction. Okay, again, we're going to get outside zone here to the right, okay, to the tight end wing side. So again, we got to make sure that we're maintaining our gap integrity in the gap that we are aligned in. So as we get these reach blocks here up front, you can see here, we're able to punch, play vertical, good hand placement. Ball wants to declare outside of us. Again, it has to bubble so we can get in on the play. On the back side, we're going to get reach blocks as well by this guard. You're going to get a good look here at our D tackle on the back side, not allowing himself to get reached. Good punch, good pad level, good hand placement. Maintain his gap, get off the block, pursue the ball, make the tackle. Great job there by Crockett again. Okay, again, reach blocks. So you can see sometimes when we get reach, we might get stuck to a little bit of a head up position. And that's all right. As long as we maintain our gap integrity with good hand placement and pad level, we can steer ourselves back into the gap. So you can see here our defensive end off this reach block is able to press out. Okay, good pad level. Let's see him maybe just a little bit lower, not quite get his shoulders turned so much. We want to kind of stay square of the line of scrimmage. He's got it anchored down. Make the ball to clear inside. Again, snap off the block. Get in on the play. Also going to get a good look at a reach block by the backside guard. Trying to reach our D tackle up the gap. Again, great takeoff. Maintaining our A gap. And able to make the tackle. All right, overreach. So what we consider an overreach is when the offensive lineman, our man, he is trying to reach us to the point where he's not really even interested in blocking us. He's just trying to make us run sideways. So what we tell our guys on the overreach is we really want to try to get vertical and cut the ball off. Again, this happens on a lot of outside zone stuff. And as long as we're getting vertical to cut the playoff, that's okay. So we get a good look at an overreach here by our D tackle here on the front side of this play. So this guard is going to step to reach him, and he's not going to get a good, uh, good point of contact on him. He's kind of just trying to make him run lateral to make him run out of the play. So X does a great job here of getting vertical takeoff off the ball to cut it off and make the ball cut inside of him. This outside zone play is designed to run to the edge, but our three technique is able to get off the ball vertical here, punch and press forward, drive him back, make the ball cut inside, for big time tackle for loss on a second and two. Again, we'll get, get another look at the overreach here. Again, with the three technique, getting this hard outside zone. Again, sometimes these guards, and they take such a hard first step to reach us with good takeoff and good vertical push, we can cut the ball off. So we'll watch the three technique here. This guy kind of just whiffs and doesn't block us, so we have great takeoff. We're pushing vertical. We can cut this ball off and make the tackle in the backfield for a five-yard loss. Again, this happens when guys are really trying to come off the ball hard to reach us, and we're playing hard vertical. So we're able to cut the ball off here. It's a great job there again by X. Again, we'll also get this block as the defensive end. Okay, with these tackles, these tackles sometimes take such a big first step to reach us. We can just punch vertical and cut the ball off now. We're okay with that as long as our guys are playing fast and playing hard. We'll be okay with it. So we'll watch at the end here, Tolu again. He gets a good overreach block by this tackle. He's able to get vertical right now, cut this ball off. Now this hard outside zone play has got to wind all the way back to the unblocked defender being seven here. And they can team up here on a good tackle. Get another look at one from the defensive end perspective. Cade playing the overreach here by the tackle. They're trying to run a hard outside zone. Again, you can see this offensive lineman's only putting one hand on him. That's not going to get the job done. We're getting off the ball vertical. And we're playing hard with good pad level. We can punch and get through there. 
set the edge of the defense and get a good tackle for loss. Again, you can see we're having good vertical takeoff. Good physicality, we're able to play through that and get in on the tackle for loss. Okay, the veer block. So the veer block is anytime the guy goes down inside. So we're gonna play the veer block differently based off of uh, what our technique is and who we are on the defensive front. So for the veer block we're gonna watch right now, the coaching point is squeeze and close. We want to get our hands on, we want to squeeze the block down, we want to close the air out of it. So we get a good look at a veer block here by this guard. He's going to try to go away from this defensive tackle. Okay, he's trying to veer away from him. So we're going to get hands on. We want to squeeze and close. Again, to take away the air out of this gap. Accelerate our feet through contact. And again, minimize the air in this gap that the linebacker has to fit. So great job there. Again, we're going to get the veer block here out front by the nose, okay, off the center. So the center is going to veer away from us. We want to get our hands on, squeeze and close. Transition our eyes to the backfield then and see where the ball is. So he gets hands on, good takeoff, squeeze and close. Like his hand placement, I like how his hips and shoulders are staying somewhat square. Okay, the quarterback wants to pull the ball on the RPO. We're right in his face in the backfield and able to affect the ball, okay, and force an incomplete pass on the RPO. So again, squeeze and close off the veer block. Get your eyes up, get to the football. Great job there by Spence. Right, again, we'll watch the three technique on the guard. The guard's gonna veer down away from him. So we wanna squeeze and close off. Good, good hands on, good pad level. Okay, squeeze and close. Redirect, get vertical then once you realize where the ball is. Okay, trip him up. Good tackle for loss here on the, on the goal line. Great job here by Crockett. Hands on, squeeze and close. Boom, get vertical. Cut the ball off. Great job. All right, so now for the defensive end. Okay, when they get the veer block by the tackle, they have to understand if they need to uh, squeeze and close and then bounce or spill, as people will call it with the block, or if they're going to force it. Okay, so in this case, we're going to watch our guys. They're going to squeeze and close and then bounce for this first example. So we'll watch Reese here. He's going to get his hands on. He's going to squeeze and close to manipulate and take away the air in this B gap as he's going down. Okay, he's thinking, I got the dive, I'm taking everything. So he's going to bounce this guard that's pulling around. Okay, he's going to be inside of it and able to get in on the tackle. Again, we don't want to stay blocked forever. Play our block reaction, get to the football. Squeeze and close, bounce underneath the guard, tackle for loss. Again, for the defensive end here, with this tackle, we got to get our hands on. We got to squeeze and close. Hands on, squeeze and close, take the air out of this B gap. Okay, bounce this uh, swipe of the fullback coming back, get underneath it, get in on the tackle. Great job by him. Hands on, squeeze and close, bounce, make the tackle. Great job by Austin. Okay. So now we're going to talk about when they have to when they get a veer block and they're going to surf. So when they surf is when they're going to be tackling the quarterback. They're quarterback responsible. They're going to force everything and they're going to surf. When we say surf, we want them to have big arms. Okay, take the air out of it and force everything back inside. So we'll watch Reese here. So off this veer block of the tackle, okay, he's going to surf to take the air out of it, chase his hip, and then force the ball back inside. So he's surfing, okay, big arms, good. Maintain the line of scrimmage. We don't want to get upfield to create a vertical seam inside of us. We want to maintain that line of scrimmage, okay, take the air out of it. He's going to force, okay, to our two unblocked defenders coming to fit the run play. Awesome job. Again, we don't want to get upfield. 
big arms, surf, take the air out of it, force. Okay, that's a tiny little crease for two guys to make a tackle in. Awesome job. Again, so as we are surfing to force, we want to match the path of anything that's coming to kick us out. If we're going to force the ball inside of us, we are the edge of the defense. We want to make sure we match the path of, match the path of anything coming across. So here we have the swiping wide receiver. Reese is working to match his path. Okay, force it. Clear that guy's bypassing him so he gets a good chip on it to help the linebacker. Okay, now he's going to redirect and get to the quarterback. Okay, sack, fumble, recovered himself on the first play of the game. Again, match the path of anything that's coming to kick you out. He's insisting to bypass him. He knows right now it's going to be some sort of boot. So he's able to work vertical. Sack fumble. Again, we'll watch Austin here on the right side of the screen. He gets this veer block by the tackle. He's going to surf, play the line of scrimmage. He's going to force the ball inside of him. Same foot, same shoulder. The coach point force. Boom, same foot, same shoulder, keeping his outside half free. Okay, he wants to bounce the ball outside of him. He's right there to make the play in the backfield. Awesome job of just doing your responsibility, understanding your technique and leverage. Again, if we watch Reese, he wants to match the path of anything coming to kick him out. So you see him here. He's going to have big arms. He's going to surf, play the line of scrimmage. He's looking to force this tight end. Okay, As he bypasses him, he's going to get vertical, chase the ball down inside out with the rest of the pursuit, and tackle it for no gain. All right, so double teams. So now we'll talk about the different sorts of double teams we'll get up front. The first one being a zone double. Now the thing about zone doubles is a lot of times somebody's trying to chip it and the other guy's trying to take you over, okay? Our big coaching point on double teams is this. The guy you are playing, the man you are aligned on, so in this case, our three technique, he's aligned on this guard. So he is his man key. That is the guy he is playing. The off guy in his gap is his pressure key. So the guy he is playing is his man key. This guy we consider his pressure key. Okay. The coaching point on double teams is we want to press this guy out just like a base block and get him on different levels. If you have great takeoff, you have great pad level and physicality, you can defeat the double team. What you don't want to do is take your hands off the man you are playing and try to fight both because that's 800 pounds worth of dude pressing you backwards. You're not going to be able to win. So you want to play the man you're aligned on. You want to stay within your gap. If you get knocked ahead up, you want to be able to throw yourself back in the gap. So we'll watch it here. So he gets a man key coming to him. Great takeoff, good pad level, good hands. Okay, his pressure key is on his hip. He's going to drive him on different levels. He gets pushed into head up position a little bit on this guard. That's okay. When he feels the pressure key work away, he's going to throw himself back into his gap here with good block destruction, and get on the tackle. Again, play your man key. Play your man key and just feel out your pressure key. Again, so the guard is his man key, the tackle is his pressure key. For the nose here, He's playing a two wide, so this guard is his man key, and the center is his pressure key. Same thought process. You want to play your man key to defeat the block. So we have good pad level takeoff here, a little bit high in the pads, but good hand placement, good physicality. Okay, we want to play our man key all the way through. Okay, and then we want to fight to stay in our gap and throw ourselves back through. Boom. Punch, throw yourself into your gap. Okay, play vertical and play physical. So great job by both these guys here playing their man keys. 
Don't take your hands off your man key. Okay, the DNs will also be getting these. Okay, so in this case, for Reese, this tackle is his man key, the tight end is his pressure key. So he gets the base block by the tackle. Boom, he's going to punch, press, okay, throw himself into the gap. Once he feels his pressure key leave, we like to see him run his feet just a little bit more. We don't want to brace ourselves on contact. We want to run our feet through contact. But great job working off the block, throwing himself into the gap, making the tackle. So, again, your man key and your pressure key are the two coaching points of a zone double. Okay, now a vertical double. You're going to get this more on uh, power and counter plays where they're trying to just blast you off the ball, push you vertical. They're not really trying to overtake you one way or another. They're just vertically pushing you off the ball. We'll get this in some inside zone teams where are truly just trying to push the ball vertically as well. But for the most part, this happens on gap scheme teams. Same coaching point as the zone doubles here. You got your man key and you have your pressure key. Again, pad level takeoff is everything. So good pad level here, good takeoff. Okay, they're trying to vertically double him back. We have good hand placement. Okay, good pad level. Throw ourselves into our gap. Great job there. Picking two for one. Punch, maintain the line of scrimmage. We're okay if you get washed a little bit laterally down the line of scrimmage on double teams. What we don't want to ever do, no matter if it's a zone double or a vertical double, is get moved off the ball backwards because then we get in the way of everybody else. Again, man key is everything on your double teams. You don't want to put a hand on each or take your hands off. Again, we'll watch the three technique here. He's going to get a vertical double team here. He has good pad level, good takeoff. Again, he gets knocked a little bit, uh, kind of head up on his guard, but he's able to create good hand separation, okay, throw himself back into the gap and make the tackle. So great job of recovering on these double teams. You're not always going to be perfect on them. Sometimes they're going to get low on your hip, but if you can throw yourself back in your gap, okay, make the tackle. Awesome job. Okay, again, the three technique here. We get this hard vertical double. Good hand placement here inside. Elbows tight, thumbs up. Good pad level underneath his. Okay, he's going to punch, press. Okay, throw himself into the gap when he feels his pressure key come off of his back. So once this tackle leaves, throws himself back in the gap. Okay, he's able to get it on the tackle, strip the ball out. Again, game-changing plays up front. We can't stay blocked forever. we got to get off blocks. It's a great job there by Kellen. Okay, back blocks. So back blocks are going to happen primarily from the center when we're getting guard pull, again, on power plays. Again, we treat back blocks just like base blocks. We want to press out, defend our gap, and keep our face in our gap. So we're going to get a guard pull, okay, here, and a center back block to the D tackle. Again, we want to press out, defend our gap, good pad level. So great job here by Stacker with his hand down the center of his chest, press out, run his feet, defend his gap. Run this guy flat on his back. Again, physicality, pad level, takeoff. Boom. Press out, defend his gap. His face is in his gap. He's restricting the gap inside of him. Pressing him backwards. Okay, getting in on the play. All right, sometimes we will have great takeoff, okay, and we'll beat the back block of the center. Okay, we don't coach our guys to get – uh, super vertically upfield to the point where we're just running upfield for no reason. But sometimes when we have great takeoff, okay, we're able to bend back like Caleb does here and beat the block, but he's able to bend and make this play. If he just runs up the field and isn't able to bend and restrict the gap inside of him, then he's just going to open up this A gap even bigger. 
but he's able to get a great takeoff here, beat the center's block, bend back, and take away this gap. So it's an awesome job of him there, having great takeoff and impacting the play in the backfield. Again, we're being really physical on these back blocks. These centers will sometimes overshoot us and end up on the other side of us. That's okay as long as we're playing fast and we're playing hard. What we don't want to do is end up head up on the center on his back block and then the linebackers behind us don't know which gap to take. So in this case, this center, okay, off the guard pull, overshoots the back block. So you'll see here, he kind of overshoots it and dives. Okay, we're able to play fast and past him and get in on the play and make the tackle. So again, this will happen sometimes when centers are going to lunge at us because we're playing so hard off the ball. As long as we play fast, the linebackers will fit off us. If we sit no man's line, then we'll ball. And again here, we'll get the back block by the center. Okay, with this pulling guard. Again, great physicality and takeoff. Okay, pressed out, defended his gap, his eyes, his body are in his gap here. He's taking it away. Okay, get off the block, snap him to the ground, the tackle. That's an awesome job there up front, great effort. Punch out, press and defend, snap off the block. Make the tackle. Great job there. Okay, down blocks. When we get down blocks, that's any time they're trying to, to pull outside of us. Okay, Pr pretty uh, common from teams that run like buck sweep and things like that. So here we're going to get a down block, okay, by the tackle so they can pull this guard pile. We're going to get a down block by the tight end so they can try to pull two of these dudes to the edge on a sweep play or a stretch play. So we transition from our man key when he pulls away to the next man. Good pad level, good takeoff there. Okay, our hands are in good position. We're you know, off the block, cutting the play off. Okay, all three D linemen on the front side of this player are able to make it. Okay, Crockett's going to get a reach block by this backside guard, like we talked about earlier. He's maintaining his gap with good hand placement and block destruction. Able to get in on the play. All right, again here, the back will get the down block by the, the tackle and the guard pulling out on a stretch play. We'll get the down block by the tight end as well here on the front side. So we see a great job here by Kale with great takeoff and pad level underneath his. Able to drive him back and run him back onto his back. Able to get in on the tackle. Great job here by Elijah on the down block. Able to punch. Again, balls declared. Rip outside, cut the playoff, get in on the tackle. All right, so that's just kind of our base way up front how we'll play um, the run technique of everything. Um, the next thing we can go into is how our guys will kind of uh, are able to anticipate their block reactions based off the backfield sets and how teams are aligned. So what we talk about with our guys up front and even the linebackers, we talk about back rules, okay? So when the back is aligned away from us, we can anticipate the zone or the blocking scheme to come to us. So if we look on the left side of the screen, okay, this nose and this end, when they see the back is aligned away, they can anticipate that the play will be coming to them. So what they want to do is offset away from the back, okay? So he can play a pretty heavy 2 eye, and this guy can widen out a little bit as a five technique. So that way they don't get reached off the first step of the old lineman because they know it's coming to them so they can maintain their gap integrity. Now, the, with this offset to you, so in the rushes case, 
in the tackles case here, when the back is – you can tighten down a little bit and play a little thicker on your man key. So you can play a pretty heavy three technique. He can play a pretty heavy six eye on the inside of this tight end, understanding that the run scheme is going to go away from them and they're going to try to get cut out of their gaps. You'll see like a zone double here and a scoop block or a veer block by this tight end. Okay. Same thing holds true on side. Okay. When the back's offset away from you, you can really cheat down here as the nose, as the two eye, and really align yourself kind of straight up in your gap or almost as a one technique on the center, understanding the zone will go away from you. And this end can play a pretty heavy five technique, understanding this tackle is gonna go down so you can anticipate the veer block coming, okay? This uh, tackle, the three technique, who's away from the back, he can widen out a little bit because he's gonna offset away from the back, anticipating the base block or a reach block coming from this uh, guard. And the same thing with the rush. He can anticipate with the back away from him that he's probably gonna have the tight end either try base block him straight up, or he's going to leave him to block the edge, and this tackle is going to come block him. So, again, he can widen out a little bit and be more of a head-up six technique on the tight end when he understands that the back is away from him. And then when our guys get a pistol, so the cure out, they put the back in pistol, and we tell those guys to align directly in their gap. That is obviously the hardest because we cannot teach and we cannot really anticipate. Sometimes we can based off of formation um, or where the tight end is, which direction the play will go. But again, we got to play this pretty much true and straight up. So we say a line directly in your gap, and you're going to play your base technique from day one. We don't want to guess. So some of these plays will probably look familiar. Okay. So again, Ryan here, number 98, sees the back is away from him. So he's going to anticipate that this guard is going to probably be going down. So you can play a pretty thick uh, three technique here. And if he does get the base block, he's going to have great takeoff through the center of his chest. Okay. Stacker over here playing the two eye sees the backs away, so he's thinking I got to widen out a little bit, anticipate that I'll probably either get some sort of zone double or this center is going to come to me, so I can have great takeoff here and vertically cut the ball off. Thing with Austin here at D, so more of a vertical take to cut the ball off, make it go inside. Watch it here, like watch before. Okay, Robin. Is base block if we will stack back away with a double team so you can have a vertical team, defend it and make the tackle again understanding where the back is is everything okay even when they're motioning all these guys around and checking the sideline and stuff okay understanding where the tailback is is everything so the best away so X here is thinking that this guard is going to be coming to him and probably the center too. So when he gets this double team coming at him as he's stepping into this A gap, he's able to anticipate the double team, okay, get vertical, split it, and make the tackle. Same thing with Reese. Okay, they're trying to mess with his guys and move the tight around. He understands with the back away, he's going to probably get a base block by this tackle. So when he does, he can kind of quick him by. Okay, throw his hands by, run right past him. Okay, same thing here. Teams are motion and moving guys around. Understanding where the tailback is is everything. When the tailback's away, we're thinking more vertical takeoff, align more directly uh, wider in our gap to cut the playoff. With the back to you, we want to align a little thicker and a little heavier technique in your gap so we don't get reached. Like we saw this before, our guys did a great job understanding where the tailback is with all this motion going on and maintaining our gap integrity up front. Okay, a big tell for teams with their tailback is if their back is offset flat or at the same level of the quarterback, you're probably going to get wider plays, wider action plays being in like an outside zone or a sweep or something of that nature. When the back is offset, but he's deeper than the quarterback, a lot of times what you're gonna see is more true inside zone type of plays because the running back cannot run through the quarterback on the outside zone play, so his track is messed. So here we see the back is flat. He's the same level of the quarterback, okay? So when these guys see him away and he's flat, they're thinking here comes outside zone, so I gotta play vertical here and cut this playoff. 
The guys on this side are thinking back is flat to me. I got a line pretty heavy on my technique, thinking that the man is going to go away from me here and try to cut me out of my gap as the backside DN. So again, here it comes. Okay, we get the zone double. We're playing our man key well here. Okay, the guy's front side doing an awesome job of getting off the ball vertically with this outside zone coming. Okay, we can anchor down two by two. Okay, the ball is going to declare inside of us. Great job on the zone double here by the D tackle to restrict this B gap. Okay, no air in there to run. All right, same thing. So as we get aligned, okay, back is away. So we're thinking here comes the base block attack. Have a good engine. Okay, you can just club them by and make the tack on the backfield. Same thing with these guys. When they see the back is to them, we're thinking the play is going to go away. So I want to play pretty thick through my gap, play thick, thick through my, my man. So we reach out of our gaps. Okay, again, like we saw before. Okay, so the back is deeper than the quarterback, and he's offset. So we're thinking more downhill run, zone, power, something of that nature. So, again, our guys are able to anticipate that, have a great takeoff here with the D tackle, not getting washed, not getting pushed vertically off this double team. Again, like we watched for Reese defending this base block by the tight end. He was having great anticipation of that is everything. Understanding where the tailback is. So that's how we use back rules to our advantage up front. Understanding where the back is offset so we can anticipate the block and uh, align for success. Align for success is everything up front. We don't want to get beat from our natural alignment. All right, the third thing I'm going to go to now um, is we're going to kind of talk about some stunts that we do up front to kind of uh, change it up so that we're not just sitting targets, sitting in our gaps all the time. All right, so see, these are kind of the four main stunts that we use um, in the run game, okay? We'll slant from the weak side. We'll slant from the strong side. We'll run like a, a D tackle game where we'll exchange who has the A gap and B gap. And then we'll run like a cross stunt where we read the center and we, uh, we loop off of him and try to use his, uh, his aggressiveness against him, okay? And there's a time and place for all these, and we'll get into that here as we start watching. All right, so the first one is that cross game where we're reading the center, okay? So if you watch here, we're going to read the center. Off his action, okay, this guy will become the penetrator when he gets the butt, and this guy will become the looper. So the penetrator is the guy who gets the back of the center. The looper is the guy who gets the face of the center. Okay, the coaching point here is we want to be slow. We don't want to step vertically and come off the ball hard because we'll never be able to loop off the penetration okay so we want to take more of a lateral step as our first step to read the center so here's our read step boom we get the we get the block at us so we're thinking punch the hip okay allow our guy to loop back through on that and cut the playoff so great job by those guys up front Again, we'll read the center will probably be going, so our guys can anticipate who will probably be the penetrator and who will be the looper. Okay, so with the back here, he's thinking, I'm probably going to be the penetrator with the center going away. So sure enough, the center goes away. He has a great first step. He's going to cut the playoff. Boom. Okay, stacker's going to loop. It turns into pass. Okay, he's unblocked on the pass to get in and get a good QB hit. All right, same thing, we're reading the center. With the back offset, we can probably anticipate who will be the penetrator and looper. And again, we need to take a good read step here. We're not on we a step more lateral and read. Okay, so read, back center his hip and penetrate, knock him off. Okay, this guy will turn into the looper. Okay, when he loops, he's just looking for first daylight. We don't want to run by open daylight. So great job here by Spence, staying tight, fitting the first light he sees. 
Okay, making the tackle unblocked. Again, with the back offset, we can anticipate who will penetrate, who will loop. So right now with the back offset to him, he's thinking I'm probably going to get the back of the center, so I got to be the penetrator. He's thinking I'm probably going to get the base block and loop off of it, loop into first daylight. So there's the back. He's thinking punch his hip, clear him out. Good job. Okay, X is now off. clear. Locked. Play back. Okay, get on the rocked. Okay, we get the back of the center. Great first step. Punch his hip, clear him out. Boom, create a big mess. Unblock guys all over the place. When you pause it here and look, when you start running these middle gains in the A and B gaps, it's taken these three to four guys to block two. If you take three to four guys to block two, you're going to win a lot of games up front. So awesome job there by those guys. Okay, again, we get this cross down up front. It's also good for pass for quarterbacks that want to step up and run and scramble. So in this case, we get the center away again. So we think I'm going to penetrate. Okay, 91 is going to loop. Okay, we're able to muddy up the, the A and B gaps here so the quarterback can't step up. He's got to stay back in the pocket. The pass rush can get to him and knock the ball down. Okay, our next one is hammer. Okay, so we consider a hammer is when we pinch the whole D line into the A and B gaps to take away everything. And that's going to force the ball to hit the C gap or wider on each edge. So when we pinch the whole front, you can see right here, nothing can be ran in the A and B gaps. The ball has to be ran east and west to the C gaps. So our guys are able to play vertical on the pinch front here. Cut the ball off, make the tackle in the backfield. Again, canceling out all the A and B gaps with the boys up front, making the ball run east and west. Okay, again with our pinch front here, our guys are all getting into the A's and B gaps here. He's already aligned in his A gap. He's going to end up in this B gap. We're canceling it out up front, so the ball has to be ran to the edge. So you can see here, we're all inside, four guys coming to the party. Pinching the front all off, so the ball has to be ran to the edge. Real good look here at the pinch fronts. Okay, it doesn't matter with all this motion. Again, we're gonna get everybody in the A's and B gaps here up front. So everybody else behind them knows the ball has to be either ran off tackle here or off tackle here. There's no room inside. So as we go here, they're going to cancel everything out. We're able to get in on the tackle. Okay, the next one was the pirate stunt that we looked at before. So that's going to be a strong side slant. Okay, so we're going to slant our D tackle into the A gap, okay, and our D end into the B gap. That's going to cancel out the front side here to the tight end, making the ball run laterally. So you can see here with the zone, they're going to slant to cancel it out. Nobody can climb to the second level to our linebacker, who's free to come make his tackle. And you can see it here, they're slanting to cancel everything out, leaving our linebacker unblocked. Again, we'll get the slant here on the left side of the screen, him into the A gap, him into the B gap. So when we do this again, we're going to cut the playoff. We're going to cut the zone off, make the ball run laterally east and west. Run off the edge to our unblocked players there to make the tackle. So great job there.
playing team defense. Okay, the next one is a sword stunt or a weak side slant. So when we get the weak side slant here, again, we're gonna cut the play off, play vertical. Good to go. Again, a weak side slant. So understanding we're going here and we're going here. Now it's important again to know the back is away from us. So the zone will be coming to us. So we got to get vertical off our slant movement here to cut the zone off. So get vertical and get vertical. Again, causing disruption up front with the slanting and moving. We're not stationary targets anymore. Causing guys to whiff. Making big hits. Okay, so ton is the next one. So the ton is just moving him from the B gap to the A gap, and this D tackle from the A gap to the B gap. Again, to change up these interior double teams. So right here, we step into the A gap. We get the guard to kind of whiff on, cut the play off. The ball has to cut all the way back to the linebackers who are unblocked. Again, here on the front side, we're able to step, get in the B gap to cut off. Don't allow the ball to hit front side. Again, we're going to step here, and we're going to step here. Now they understand the back is flat away, so the zone is going to go away from them. So they really got to work to get to their gap and cut the ball off. So Crockett does a good job here of understanding as he, go, as he slants to his A-gap that the ball is going to run away from him, so I don't want to fight back into my block. I want to keep running. So as this guard is trying to block him, he keeps running his feet. Ball runs right into his chest. Great job there wrapping up on the tackle, grabbing cloth. Okay, again. So we got to stunt to the B-gap and stunt to the A-gap. So this is good again. We change up where the double teams are. So we step here, okay? Boom. They want to try to run the ball right here. Well, we have two guys right in that gap. We're good to go. We're able to stuff the run play. So those are kind of the run stunts that we use up front as well to kind of change things up and change up the, uh, the angles of the blocking or the double teams all occur. So that's kind of my presentation on how we will uh, defend the run, how we'll play our block reactions, um, and how we'll kind of change it up and use the back rules um, to our advantage to really anticipate the blocking scheme that's going to happen. Spencer, I got a couple questions too. You talked a ton about hand placement. What is your guys' ideal hand placement, and is that something you guys work on every day? Is that an everyday drill for you? And, and where do you want the hands? Yep. Um, so our hand placement is our man hand or the near hand of the guy we're playing. We want that down the center of his chest or down the V of his neck. So we want to get right here with our thumb up. Okay, our off hand, we're aiming for the shoulder pad, the armpit, kind of nice and tight inside there so that way we can really own them and steer them where we want them. That's kind of where we're aiming with our hand placement. Is man hand or our near hand down the center of his chest, and then our off hand kind of on the shoulder pad of the armpit, again, nice and tight with our elbows tight and thumbs up. Question I have then for you is, you know, how much, you know, you guys were talking about your, your key rules for your backs, you know, and sometimes if the back's away, kind of light, adjusting your alignment based off of that, is a lot of how you adjust your technique based on the type of scheme a team runs, like if they're more gap scheme versus more of a zone scheme, does that impact the keys that you guys are looking for when the back's away? Yep, a little bit. Um, so kind of the first question our guys ask every week when they come in the meeting room, um, on Mondays, like, do the back rules apply this week? Because that's kind of everything to them. They look at it every play. So teams that are big zone teams, the back is everything. Um, like Minnesota will run a little bit of, like, same side zone, so the back will be offset, and they'll actually run the zone at them and kind of use our rules against us. Again, that's something that when you're watching scouting, um, a way to make sure, okay, guys, they will run this. We can't cheat that much. 
um, but maybe just a hair left and right, six inches here or there can make a big difference. Um, and then as far as gap scheme teasings go, um, all you really want to look at is, is the gap scheme going to the back or away from the back, and if that'll stay consistent. Um, if they're like a gap scheme team, they'll run it at the tailback. Then you got to look, okay, is he deeper when he's offset? Is he flatter with the quarterback when he's offset? So that's just another way to kind of combat that with your gap scheme teams um, is understanding where the back alignment is um, as far as what plays you'll kind of get. Um, if the team is really messing with us, like I said, then we'll just go to our base, our base technique and just treat it as if the back was in pistol and kind of just play our, our run scheme like we know how to from day one.